All right, now we have a guest who's going to be joining us in just a second, a man that you have met maybe by paying attention to this broadcast last year, but he is a man of heroic proportions. Literally. Literally, and I mean it. Uh, and we were talking about Iraq a few minutes ago. So that's what we're talking about. Nick Popovich is joining us right now. Nick, you were the famous guy up there who was on top of the tank when they brought down the statue of Saddam Hussein at the very beginning of the Iraq war. That was a long time ago, a long time. It feels like 100 years ago, doesn't it? But it, it, it was. But it really is recent history. Well, and it says a lot about what this is all about, because there's, there's all kinds of facets to this thing. But for me, where I was standing there, the thing I got to see was freedom. Because not only did we take the fight on terror from our shores to theirs, but we, but we took freedom and liberty with us. And it was, it was an amazing thing to see. When I saw those Iraqi people just celebrating down there in downtown Baghdad, the arrival of the Americans, I, mean, it, it was, it, I was truly privileged to, to have been able to see that, honored to have seen it. Boy, I, I can't believe how actually hateful many Americans were to our returning war veterans from Iraq. And that's why I got involved and so many other people got involved in Troopathon, um, primarily because we want to raise awareness of the contributions of our military. And, and you literally left something behind on the battlefield. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was very blessed in, uh, as far as the welcome home. I, I, I was welcomed home in, 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 in always very welcomed. I always felt the, the complete gratitude to this nation. I think what's happened over the years is that it's become almost like a forgotten thing because there's men and women deploying right now and when they leave, they're, they're leaving to win. They're, they're leaving to do great things. They're, living to, they're leaving to give everything up to including their lives. And for those of us here to support by making a care package and send over there, I mean, that little piece of home that comes there because that's the, that's the difference. You know, the military's gonna give you everything you need, but the, but the care package is a piece of home. It's, it's, it's people here, all those, those of us here, saying we haven't forgotten about you. We know well, you're out there fighting for us. The military used to give you everything that you need <laughs> until the Department of Defense actually cut back commissary privileges 24-7 um, that was available to forward operating bases in Afghanistan. I was shocked and I am outraged as an American that that is taking place, but it is a reminder of how very valuable these care packages are. Well, the, the, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, they're gonna make it happen with whatever they have. They're gonna take whatever is issued to them and they're gonna make it happen. They're, they're gonna, so the least we can do is support it. The least we can do is this, and, and also with those things you're talking about, to make sure that those cuts don't happen, to, to put, a, put a bug in the ear of your local elected official and let them know, hey, I pay taxes, I want it to go to them. That's what I'm paying it for. Yeah. Nick, Nick, I know that the men and women who are serving, they're in military, they don't complain, at least not outwardly. Maybe they, <laughs> might, they might grouse a little bit to each other, uh, but you never hear them come on television and talk about how hard it is over there, nah, because no it's their duty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you're, uh, it's been a while since you've been uh, overseas and you've been in Iraq, and, and tell us about what the grind is like. It's, I mean, you always ask, you know, why does our enemy hate us so much? If I had to live in Iraq, I'd be angry too, right? I mean, it's a pretty nasty place to be. Well, back then, what you could see every day was that back with Ferdo Square, when you saw the fall of the statue and the fall of the Saddam regime, the people were elated, they were happy. But then every day you'd see the trash piling up, the power's still off, the yes. water's still out. So you knew it was right for, for the wrong people to come in and, and start something bad there. So there, there's a lot of hurt feelings, but it was never directed towards us. And that's one of the things I noticed as the... Uh, as the years went on in this war. Because the one thing that always wins for us overseas is that American soldier, that American Marine, on the ground, on the deck, interacting with those local people. That's something that wins, that wins the population over. They see us, they love us, they trust us, and they know they can count on us. They know we're not gonna leave. And when you start pulling back and trying to win these things with uh, drones in the air, yeah. and you don't have that American on the ground anymore, it's very hard to win the hearts and minds. And it's why morale is so important. That's what these care packages do. I it agree. boosts morale, it keeps everybody happy. Nick, what are you doing now with your life? <laughs> well, I looked at my skill set and I figured, well, I was, a, I was a drill instructor and I was a platoon sergeant. I figured, what better thing for me to do than become a high school teacher? So, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I figured I'd been to combat, kind of like that, kind of enjoyed it, so, you know. I figured, uh, you know, why not be a high school teacher? Oh, who wants to see this guy in detention? This is not good. <laughs> no, that would be a discipline. That would be a deterrent. Your goodness. are probably among the highest in the country. So that was kind of a long journey for me, though. You know, I, I told him in the VA hospital, and I because I, I was black blind for a period of time when I started to get my sight back. They said, what do you want to do? I told him that. They said, great, what's your degree in? I said, I got nothing. PhD, plain high school diploma. So, 
<laughs> so I used the uh, GI Bill. I went to school. It's a great benefit. And, uh, and then my community down there in San Diego welcomed, welcomed me home. San Diego State University was a very welcoming place. To Aztecs. Me. Yeah, San Diego Aztecs. is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Debbie, place. you snuck in here in my I blind did. spot. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I just wanted, Nick, when you get those care packages over there, what were some of the emotions? What were some of the feelings that you were going through as you opened those? It's a, it's a piece of home. That's the thing is, that of everything else that's in it, the things that are in it are nice, but the thing that you really walk away from it with is it's a piece of home. Yeah. It's somebody home went to the trouble to, to, to put that together and send it to you. I remember when I got back in the first Gulf War for some school kids and had little crossword puzzles in it and stuff, and I, I cherished that yeah. because it was a piece, piece of home. Somebody at home saying, we care about yeah. you, we, and we thank you. The, the first trip that Mel and I took over to Iraq, we had, um, uh, I, some ridiculous amount of cards. I know I hand delivered 10,000. 225,000, but who's counting? Yeah, yeah, there you go, there you go. Obviously we ship most of those, but we got to deliver personally 10,000 of them. And we would read through some of those cards as we would get them. And a lot of them were, you know, kindergarten, five-year-old kids. Wow. And, and the troops just loved those messages from those kids and the things Absolutely. they would say. And I think that's what's so cool about our care packages because it does, it's addressed to you. If you were over there, you'd get the care package, Nick Papa Ditch with your address in there, and the message would be to you. It wouldn't be, you know, a pallet full of them that goes and sits in a chaplain's office and they divvy it up and you don't know where it came <laughs> that's, from. That's a good boy. So this, this is amazing that they can do that and they can go to troopathon.org or call 866-866-6372 to do that. Yeah. And it impacts, it was not unusual. For me Nick. to see one of you guys over there, brave, you know, the toughest warriors we've got, Nick, to open that in a tear. Thank you so much for your service. Thank oh, my you. pleasure. Wish I could still be doing it. Marini is a good trigger eye, though. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Nick Papadich, everybody. Thank you. And you are watching Troopathon 6.